Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We're gathered another evening as we prepare our hearts to hear what God has in store for us. And so at this time, we have sing, I pray we'd all be ready by the Chicago Mass Choir. Indeed, let us all be ready.
you, Lord. Indeed, I pray that we'll all be ready for the return of Jesus Christ. And that's what we are focusing on today. And I trust that our hearts will be blessed. Praise God. At this time, let us pray. Father, we are thankful for this evening. We are thankful for your goodness towards us. We want to thank you, God, that you are expecting our lives to be prepared. And so we ask for your help. We pray that your word will strengthen us and help us in this preparation mode. That indeed we will be ready for your return. I pray you would bless everything that shall be said and done. Bless everyone who will partake, partake in this study tonight. And let your blessings be upon us as we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. So greetings to one, greetings to all. Welcome to those who have already shouted out to. And for those whom I may have missed you, you just passed through and uh, I did not get your name. So I want to welcome everyone. Sharon French, always a pleasure seeing you join us. Austin Rowe from Canada, good to have you. Anna Brown, just tuning in. Glad to have you as well. Minister Adams, who is online. And just about everyone who will join us tonight, I want to give a big welcome and greet you in the precious name of Jesus. This evening, we want to look at the theme, signs of end times in current events. Signs of end times in current events. And we'll be looking again from the Word of God, St. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 14. And Brother Ricard is going to take us through the scriptures tonight. So I want to invite him to come and to share God's Word with us. May we listen as he reads from Matthew, St. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 14. Be blessed. As Jesus was leaving the temple grounds, his disciples pointed out to him the various temple buildings. But he responded, Do you see all these buildings? I tell you the truth, they will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah. They will deceive many, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars. But don't panic. Yes, things, yes these things must take place, but end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to the war against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world, but all this is one is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world, so that all nations will hear it, and then the end will come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Brother Ricard, for reading for us so timely. Also want to acknowledge Mar Marcia Thompson, who is now online with us. Good evening to you as well. And indeed, we are here for an interesting time. So we're looking at the theme, signs of end times in current events. And we have read from St. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 14. And so for this evening, I want to reveal some findings from a study that was done and then um, in subsequent week what we're going to be looking at is some aspects of what this study is about amen so the study is done by lifeway research and it was done by a person of that organization known as aaron earls and here a sample was done of 1000 pastors and these pastors had views about the signs of the end times in current events because there's so much happening worldwide 
and so the need for this research was very important and one of the area is signs of Jesus's return are any of these types of current events birth pains that was mentioned in the Word of God that Jesus was referring to when he asked the disciples and um, when the disciples asked him when would he return so the birth pains that Jesus referred to are the current events um, a part of that this is something that we are concerned about and so the research was done among these pastors of evangelical churches and historically black churches and uh, there are several things that came out from the study and i would just want to highlight these and for us to look at them for ourselves as well and see what our views are because our views is something that is important and we want our views to be informed by the word and that's why we're going to delve deeper into aspects of these areas that you know are being covered so the first one is the rise of false prophets and false teachers that's one of the signs that Jesus uh, mentioned and 83 percent of these pastors believe that this is one of the signs you know that that that, that is happening currently and it, it, it is tying to the sign that Jesus is speaking of, which is the end time. The love of many believers growing cold, 81%. So when we see these things happening around us, we are going to be concerned because these are the signs that Jesus mentioned. Traditional morals become less acceptable. And the percentage is 79% of the pastors believe that and of course we realize that morals you know change over time and things that we accept now in another five years we we, we do not accept them we our views change what we call it is that our, our world view has changed and 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 this is what tends to happen even in the body of christ and even as a nation so we've got to be careful because um, that could amount to one of the signs that shows that Jesus is near to return. Wars and national conflicts, 78%. Earthquakes and other natural disasters, 76% of the believer, of their pastors believe that this is a sign. The number of people abandoning their Christian faith, 75%. Famines, 70%. And anti Semitism towards Jewish people worldwide, 63%. And, and the, the, the last point is that 11% believe that none of these that are happening now um, have anything to do with the signs that Jesus was referring to. So almost 9 out of 10 of the pastors see at least some current events matching those Jesus uh, that Jesus um, would Jesus speak of that would occur shortly um, before he returns to the earth according to the study of end times so all the signs that Jesus is referring to we're going to see them before he returns and what we're seeing is that our, the current affairs they some of them look pretty much as the signs that Jesus speak of and uh, these pastors are agreeing based on the percentage and we realize that a large portion of these 1000 pastors hold this view and it's interesting because these are persons who you know are leaders of church leaders of a large body of flock they are sharing what god lays on their heart and so if this is their view then it means a, a large number of their followers perhaps have the same views and also, these are people who would have also studied the Word of God and they will be looking at, you know, in, if their view is this, then it means that it's their understanding of the Word and also their relationship with God. So it is something for us to think about. And if your views are even different, it's something for us to, you know, be mindful of because we must be in a state of readiness. Bless the Lord. And, you know, when we think about it, the word of God says that in Acts that the, the word must be preached in all nations and then shall the end come. And you, you realize uh, um, in the same chapter, same um, Matthew 24, and we realize that not all people group 
have received the word. So some persons may think that they do have some time, but you really don't have any time. Because what can happen is that you can die before the word reach all people group. And therefore you will not have the opportunity to repent and to be accepted by God anymore. So we must be in a state of readiness because no man know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall put in his appearance and no man know the day nor the hour when you shall pass because it's appointed unto man once to die and after death comes the judgment. So let us all be ready for his return. Bless the Lord. So 97% of the pastors believe that Jesus Christ will literally and personally return to the earth again. How many of us believe this? I don't know. I, I, I believe it as well. In Matthew 24, Jesus' disciples asked him about the signs of his coming. And he responded by speaking of birth pains that would precede his return. So these birth pains are going to come before his return. And we realize that a number of the pastors believe that some of these current affairs, the current things that are happening around us, earthquakes, famines, and wars among countries, and rumors of war, just hearing about these wars, sometimes we don't even have all the details, we just know that one country have a problem with another country, so it's rumors of war. All of these, and even the pandemic that we're going through, all of these are current affairs, and they look very close to the birth pains that Jesus spoke of. And there are several lists of potential signs that Jesus' return, that Jesus' return um, are covered in. And we read of them in St. Matthew 24. Some is also covered in chapter 25 of Matthew. And Mark 13 and Luke 21, those captures most of what is said in Matthew 24 to 25. So we can all read those gospel and see what the word of God is saying, but they are very close because they are covering similar um, discourse regarding Jesus having that conversation with his disciples on the Mount of Olive. So some, some of these things that we are going through, the concept of global pandemic and the global sickness, these are things that we could look at and think they are part of this birth pains. There are disturbances in creation that disorient, disorient and trouble people. They come in forms of earthquakes and wars. And Jesus mentioned plagues and pestilence in Luke chapter 21. So the pandemic is viewed as part of the birth pains that Jesus mentioned. So the big question to the pastors was, do you, um, do you believe that certain current affairs were included in Jesus' warning? Bless the Lord. Only 11% of these pastors um, did not believe that the current affairs and the current things that we are seeing are part of the birth pains that Jesus was referring to. So, it, to each his own, what is your view about it? You know, when we think about all that we are going through and what is happening worldwide, are these things pointing to the birth pain that Jesus referred to and to his coming? And those things we want to look at in more depth in later studies. It is important to discuss these birth pains and events leading up to the second coming of Jesus, especially in light of the current pandemic that we are going through, the famous, the novel COVID-19. Praise God. Other findings that came out of the study is that um, I expect Jesus to return in my lifetime. 56% of these pastors believe, more than half of them believe that Jesus is going to return in their lifetime. So obviously they believe Jesus is going to return very soon. But what I'm challenged about, the word of God says, when you see all these things, it is still not the end. So the birth pains are going to come, but it's still not the end. And so I, am not, I, I don't hold the view that Jesus is going to come in my lifetime. I think I will leave the earth before he returns. You know? But the point is, I cannot say that I have, um, I have time. I don't have any time 
you and I don't have any time. We don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know what the next minute brings. So we must ensure that we are in a state of readiness. I pray we'd all be ready for his return. 89% believes communicating the urgency of Christ's return is important. That I agree with as well. But there are so many views about the end time and, you know, from I was a boy, they said Jesus is coming soon, you know. And so when you stand to speak about this, it becomes a little challenging because you are speaking about his coming soon, but the soon it, 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 you, you can't, it's not soon in our natural soon, you know. The fact is, because he, he is coming unexpectedly, every minute of the day could be the next minute. So his coming is really soon. It is sooner than we think. And the coming can come at any time, but he's coming. So we must have that sense of readiness. And that's why the view is that he's coming soon. If we have the view that he's coming in the next 10 years, then obviously we don't even have to talk about it. We don't even have to worry. In the ninth year, we, we all can get ready because he's coming in the 10th year. If, if, if that is the view, then he's not coming soon for us. But when we promote that he's coming soon, we will live our life in a state of readiness. Because we don't know the next minute that he will return, so we will all be ready. And that's the, the notion. Some of us, we, 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 we get ready and we, we are in a state of readiness and we wait another year or we wait another two years and Jesus don't return. And we say, oh, look at Jesus, I come again. And you feel that you must go and live it up some more and then the cycle continues. Brothers and sisters, we cannot live carelessly. We have to live a state of consistency because we do not know the day nor the hour. So communicating the urgency of Christ's return is important and 89% of, of the pastors believe that and I hold that view as well. Whether Jesus', whether Jesus return is near or far, there are some things that it says to us as Christians we believe the disturbances that we are going through, that they represent, one, the groaning of creation. So creation in and of itself is feeling, you know, the impact and it is groaning. It is also a reminder of our mortality. It helps us to know that we are man and that, you know, we are not in control. We cannot stop these things from happening. You know, we will put in... Um, um, vaccine to control COVID, but at the same time, we cannot stop COVID from coming. You know, we cannot stop it from spreading if, if, if um, as it is. No matter how responsible we try, it, this is a pandemic and it will find its way to continue to spread. So it reminds us of our mortality. It also reminds us of, of, us of our need for God. Yes, because when, it's when we are in our crisis that we really realize that we are in need of God. You know, when we are strong and everything is going well, we beat our chest and we believe that everything that we achieve, it's all about us. And we have that mindset in ourselves that we can change things and do as we please. But when crisis takes us, that's when we really realize that we are in need of God. Brothers and sisters, I want you to hold on to your God. Whether it's good times or bad times, hold on to your God. Don't wait until bad time that you come and, and try to find him because you may not find him. Amen? You, you, you must call upon him while he can be found. Right? You, mu you must respond to him when he's knocking at your door. Don't wait until you really need this friend and then you are searching for him. Let him be your friend now. Bless the Lord. And the fourth thing that comes out of these disturbances that we are seeing around us is that it helps us to see the accountability that we have in God for life both now and forevermore we are accountable to God and we have to be mindful of that some other signs that came out in the study is that 70 percent says the modern rebirth of the state of Israel and the regathering of millions of Jewish people were fulfillment of prophecies in the Bible. Yes, interesting, 70%. 69% says that events shows Christ's return is closer. 39% agrees that 
the establishment of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem is a sign of the end times. 62% believes another temple, another temple, will be built in Jerusalem in accordance with a prophecy in Ezekiel 40 to 48. Chapter 40 to 48. 73% believe Christ will return and reign in Jerusalem in fulfillment of God's promise to David. And 57% believe the Bible teaches that one day most of most or all Jewish people alive will believe in Jesus. 59% say Jesus will return when the Jewish people accept Jesus. So, if the Jewish people don't accept Jesus, then it means that we have a little more time, is it? Well, I want to challenge you, don't have any time. Bless the Lord. And the big one here is that 98% believes that sharing the gospel with Jewish people is important. So, it means that as, as leaders, as pastors, they see their role as important, not just to be reaching those who have already accepted the Lord, but also the Jewish people who are holding on to Judaism and really not embracing Jesus Christ as the true Messiah. Bless the Lord. Some other findings that came out about the end times within this study is that 94% uh, say they feel equipped to teach on prophecies found in the Bible. And there are various prophecies, you know, prophecies that are done by Joel and Ezekiel and Daniel, right? Some of those prophets. Also, what, you know, is shared in the New Testament, such as Revelations, that gives a whole lot of prophecy. And they say they feel equipped to teach on these prophecies. Most pastors believe it is important to study and teach on biblical prophecies and the end times. 60% say it is important to preach on the end time prophecies in the book of Revelation. And 60% uh, believe it is important to preach on the Old Testament prophecies. 57% believe they should study the end time personally. So this is, this is important. For us as leaders, we should see it important to understand this for ourselves just as how we would want to share our understanding with other people. 24% speak to their congregation about end-time prophecies at least once, once a month. And 48 is doing it several times for the year. So the current global pandemic will create interest about the Bible, about what the Bible says about plagues, disasters, and the end time. And so pastors should help people uh, to get ready, yes, to be ready for Christ's return. So in closing, what we, moving forward into the different weeks, I want to zero in on some of these aspects. Interestingly, we are looking at the views of a thousand pastors, and we see that many of the view is that what we are facing worldwide and the current affairs that we are that we are that are happening it is you know amounting to the birth pains that jesus referred to that will come before his return and some areas that i want to zero in on is the whole business of what jesus this discourse that jesus covered within matthew 24 25 and Mark 13, Luke 21. All of them really intertwine and speak about the same issues. But we want to zero in on some aspects regarding that that Jesus spoke about. Um, it is said that it is important to discuss the birth pains and events leading to the second coming of Jesus. And in those chapters, it speaks about the birth pains. So we would want to zero in in our subsequent lesson um, study regarding these, this birth pain and events leading to the second coming of Jesus. 89% believes it is um, commun believes communicating the urgency of Christ's return is important. So we want to focus some more 
on that as we go forward. And, you know, the disturbance that we see, it, it, it speaks to four areas that we, we spoke about, and we will want to zero in on some of these. Groaning of creation, reminding us, us of our mortality, our need for God, the accountability that we have in God for life, both now and forevermore. would want to zero in on that some more. The areas now that um, would be more challenging, but I find them quite interesting and would want to get more into them, is that 70% believe that the modern rebirth of the state of Israel and the regathering of millions of Jewish people, that it is the fulfillment of the Bible. So we would want to do some study on that. Also, the establishment of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem is a sign of the end time. We'd want to do some more research on that. We want to understand why so many of the pastors would have that view. Also, that another temple is going to be rebuilt in Jerusalem in accordance with the prophecy that is in Ezekiel 40, chapter 40 to uh, 48. So, in our subsequent study, we want to look at some of these areas and we also want to do some studies regarding the prophecies that are in Revelation. And we could also look at some of the prophecies that are in the Old Testament. So we're looking for some interesting studies going forward. And of course, this research that is here is a foundation. It is setting a foundation for us so that we can really know what we are about. I'm glad that, you know, the, the signs that Jesus referred to, all of these signs were asked of the pastors and majority of them hold, you know, a strong view that what we are seeing now is a sign of what Jesus says that will come before his return. So this is telling us that it is, it is um, wind up time, it is, time is winding up and you and I need to be ready to meet the Lord. Let us not procrastinate. Let us not think that we have more time. Let us not reason the thing in our own way. Because the word of God, even in the, in the same chapter there, in, I think in chapter 25 of St. Matthew, it gives us different parables. One about the, 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 uh, the, the great man who was going away and he gave out you know, the talents, the bags of, of money. Two is, is servants, the three categories of servant. And after a long time, he returned. Also, the story of the, the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. So, and it shows us that the bridegroom tarried. So, you and I expect that the bridegroom will come at a particular time. And we are well prepared for that. But remember, he can tarry. Because, you see, our timing and God's timing is not the same. And so we've got to ensure that we are always in a state of readiness. So those parables are profound and they speak to something that when we reason it out, it helps us to understand that we are in a critical situation, right? It's not a situation where we have any control over it. What we have to do is to be wise. Make sure that we are ready. Make sure that we live a state of readiness. Live consistently. Build your relationship with God and remain faithful to him so that if he comes and if he, or if he calls us home before his return, we will all be ready. I want to thank you for sharing in this study tonight and in particular to listen to this, these findings. And I trust that we will really focus on them some more. Yes, if it is possible, re-listen to the broadcast and make note for yourself and think about it. If 1,000 persons can hold strong view about something, it says much to us because these are pastors who would have been studying God's word. They will be hearing from God. They will be sharing with their followers and they hold these strong views. What about us tonight? What are our views? And we need to look at that. And if these views are really true and if they hold true, then it's saying to us that God can come, you know, Jesus can come at any time, any, any time. And so that is why we need to be ready. So we don't know the day nor the hour, but we need to be ready. So that's the study for tonight and we're going to move into prayer. 
And then, as I said, going forward, we are going to be looking at different aspects because we want to really look at the end time and we want to study and inform ourselves more and more because knowledge is power. And where we know, the more we know is the better we will be in making good choices, in making good decisions, and in remaining faithful to the living God. So, God bless you tonight. Thanks for uh, paying attention to the study. And at this time, we're opening up for any prayer requests. And then I will move into prayer. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Want to big up uh, Merit Thompson, who is with us tonight. Amen. And Sean French, who you have been with us throughout the study. So grateful to have you um, just stay in tune and I trust that your heart was richly, richly blessed. Praise God. Amen. So are there any prayer requests? I want you to send them in quickly so that we can move into just praying with you and bring the study to a close. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of this earth will grow strange leading in the light of his glory and grace and the things of this earth will grow strange lead him in the light of his glory and grace bless the lord bless the lord welcome sister swaby veronica swaby thanks for joining us tonight we're moving into prayer amen so let us turn our eyes upon jesus this is a time where our eyes must be on him. You know, we are at the end times. And if we are at the end time, we must keep our eyes on Jesus so that we don't get off track. So that the enemy does not deceive us. So that we do not maintain our own ideologies and our own views and cause us to be led astray. Our eyes must be on Jesus. Father, we are thankful for this evening. We are thankful for this great study that you have Help us to go through. We thank you for the research that was done. We thank you for the views that were shared. And God, it really encourages us that we need to get it right. We need to get ourselves in a state of readiness. Fathers, you speak about the birth pains. And so many of these pastors hold the views that what we are facing currently ties to this birth pain that you have spoken of. And that these things will happen before your return. I pray, mighty God, that you would help us to be ready. Lord, we do not know the day nor the hour, but I pray that you would help us to be ready for your return. I pray that you would forgive us of our trespasses and our sins. I pray, mighty God, that we will delight ourselves in you. I pray, mighty God, that we will seek after you, will hunger and thirst after your righteousness. We will desire more and more for you and of you. I pray, mighty God, that we will realize that time is winding out. Oh God, and we do not have a, a lot of time. So many things are happening. So many things that are 
Or so many persons are being hurt. So many persons are losing their lives. Oh God, and different situations that are so unusual are coming up from day to day. But I pray, mighty God, that our eyes will be upon you so that the things of this earth, Lord, that the pandemic, the disturbances, these things, oh God, of this earth, they will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. I pray, mighty God, that you keep us focused. You keep us, oh God, our hearts in touch and in tune with you. That, God, we will desire to just want to be in your presence more and more. I pray, mighty God, that your hand will be upon us individually and collectively. Oh God, I lift up Mother Church to you even now. Every brother, every sister, Oh, God, I pray that their lives will be hid in you and that they will draw closer and closer to you. Lord, we are at the end time. And sometimes, God, it seems like your coming is going to be delayed. But I pray that, God, you would help us not to think about the delay, but to think about being prepared and being ready for this return. I pray, mighty God, that your Holy Spirit will do a work in our hearts and will strengthen us and propel us, mighty God, that we will live faithfully for you. I pray for all other brothers and sisters of different faith, oh God, who are represented in here tonight and will represent in the study that is broadcast later. Lord, I pray that as they will participate, as they will listen, that mighty God, you will cause them to see the urgency of drawing closer to you. The urgency of, of knowing, Lord, that your coming is very soon. Oh God, and, and, and that we need to redeem the time because the days are evil. We need to redeem the time because you are, the redemption draw it nigh. Yes, God, you're, the redemption is very near. You're coming to redeem us, mighty God, and we want to be ready for that time. I pray that you'll pour out upon us, upon all flesh, Lord, because in the end, you said that you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and we pray for the pouring of your spirit. Oh, God, we pray that we'll see dreams and vision coming forth Oh God, from your people, because you would have poured out upon us. Let, oh God, your, the prophecies be fulfilled in our very lives, in our very eyes. And that, God, we will be willing to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And to continue to be faithful to you. I pray, God, that you bless everyone tonight in a special way. And as we will go into other studies in subsequent week, I pray that you give us the, the strength, oh God, to, to, to endure. And that, God, you would give me the insight. You would give me, you would lead me, oh God, as I prepare and that as I share that your people will be empowered and be strengthened. So even now we commit the future studies in your hand and as we study the end time, mighty God, we are praying that we will be serious about it and that God, we will, our faith will be, will be strengthened and we will be willing to go all the way with you. Cover everyone tonight, mighty God. You know our different circumstances. You know our family situation. You know what we are struggling with. You know what the current um, events that are affecting us and how we are affected. And so we commit everyone in your hands tonight. And we pray that whatever our desires are, whatever we are in need of, we pray that you will show up in our lives and prove yourself that you are the all-sufficient God. Break the strongholds of the enemy tonight. Break every deceptive spirits, Lord, that comes to help us to throw us off guard and to lead us into other parts. Mighty God, I pray that you break every deceptive spirits tonight. Those that whispers in our ears. Those that comes like good friends uh, and they try to, to convince us and to lead us astray. Those, oh God, that, that comes uh, like they are so kind and loving and caring when they are really trying to deceive us and to draw us down. I pray you break every deceptive spirit tonight and cause that the spirit Spirit of God will be lift will lift up a standard against it, and that mighty God, our eyes will be open so that we will be able to renounce and we will be able to rebuke the deceptive spirits that comes to devour us. I break them tonight over your people, and I pray that we will go forward and conquer. We will go forward and live according to your precepts. Oh God, we pray that your the, the Holy Spirit will be activated in our lives tonight and. To 
to war against every spirit that comes to distress us, every spirit that comes to, to derail us, every spirit that comes to hinder our blessing and our breakthrough. We come against them tonight, mighty God, and we shut down the host of hell that is working against your people, and we lift up the host of heaven, and we pray that your power will be unleashed upon your people tonight, and that we will be strengthened and we will be effective, oh God, as we walk before you and be perfect. Cover us under your blood, mighty God. Encircle us. And as we are going into the end time study, I know that the enemy is going to, is going to come up with different devices, oh God, and to, 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 to come against us and to cause us to see things in a negative way and to see things in our own eyes. But I pray that the Spirit of God will be activated even now so that every time the enemy show up, we will see him from afar and we'll be able to renounce him and that we will have the victory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the breakthrough tonight. We continue to pray for our nation and for the other countries that are represented in this study. We pray for the global uh, uh, space that we are in tonight. And we pray that you continue to watch over us. Lord, as we go through the birth pains, we pray that your people will overcome, that your people will remain. Oh God, we will not be destroyed. Oh Lord, edge us in in this time. Keep us safe till the storm passes by and those that are outside of your will we pray that they will come into the fold tonight so we pray that you'll touch the hearts of men and women oh god bring conviction of sin and draw your people into the fold before time changes into eternity we pray for our loved ones tonight oh god those that are so deep in sin those that cause our hearts to tremble those that we continue to pray for from night and day after day we pray that there'll be a turn and a shift in their lives because when they submit and when they surrender I know that their lives are going to draw others to you. So those that are stubborn and wayward within our families mighty God we pray for a miraculous touch tonight a miraculous turn in their, in their, in their, in their lives that there be a shift oh God in their circumstances and they cannot do nothing else but to submit to your lordship. Let there be a work tonight in our families and as you do them mighty God as you do that work we command that other lives will be touched because of this miracle in the name of Jesus Christ pour out upon your people tonight mighty God many are lack, lacking many are in need and I pray God that you will extend your hand cause that your people will experience your touch tonight and know that you are with them cover us under your blood in a special way as we just declare you Lord of our lives and Lord over our problems, our circumstances, we declare that you're bigger than our problem. You're bigger than what people say. You're bigger than everything that the enemy will do. You are a big God. And so we lift you up and we declare you Lord of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you tonight. Yes, and the prayer moved me into to some dimension that I didn't even think I would have been tonight. But especially what, one of the things that comes out in the prayer is that we're moving into some real, real things, you know, that the enemy is going to lift up his, his head because, you know, he doesn't want us to understand the urgency of the end times. But brothers and sisters, the Lord is moving us in this direction. Let us move with him. Let us be ready. Let us share the link so that others can benefit Benefit from the study even now if you haven't shared it go ahead and share the link I want to see more link being shared most times I only see one or two persons sharing I want to see more of you sharing this link tonight so that in the subsequent studies we can have more persons coming on because indeed it is very urgent the coming of our Lord is very near and you and I must be ready for his return bless the Lord so I'm gonna be closing with the with a song, Don't Want to Be Left Behind by Steve Watkins. And I trust that you'll be blessed by this song. I don't want to be left behind. And I don't want to see you being left behind. I don't want to see your family members, your friends, your loved ones. I don't want to see them being left behind. I don't want to see nobody from Jamaica being left behind. Nobody from Canada. Nobody from America. Nobody from England. Wherever you are, I don't want to see you being left behind. So let us get into this state of readiness and live consistently for our God because he's counting on us. 
God bless you all. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to keep us saved and to keep us in his will. To him be glory, honor, dominion, and power both now and forevermore until he comes. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Don't want to be left behind by Steve Watkins. Amen. Be blessed. So that your friends can be blessed as well. Oh, when the Lord shall come again, that's when I live my life. Pure and holy, I don't want to be left behind. I know the Lord is coming, He's coming back again. He's coming back. Continue to draw closer to the Lord because indeed he is counting on you. God bless you.